Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel, We're the Movie Couple. I'm Wendy. And I'm Dustin. And this is our non-spoiler review for The Last Duel. The Last Duel is directed by Ridley Scott and stars Matt Damon, Adam Driver, Jodie Comer, and Ben Affleck. Jean de Carouge challenges his squire to a duel to the death after his wife accuses the squire as her attacker. Well, you've all seen the trailer, you probably have seen our reaction, but if not, you can check it out right here. It is a heavy, heavy tone, uh trailer and of course we were talking about already just kind of even just looking at the visual overall everything's kind of dark yes. dreary, really sets the tone you got Jodie Comer who is just even in one of the first trailer we saw I think she literally delivered one or two lines but it was so effective we felt all of her emotion it is a story of why Jean, Jean de Carouge and his squire Jacques were doing a duel to the death and that's because the wife of Jean de Carouge, uh, Marguerite has accused Jack of attacking her. Essentially, trigger warning here, um, he sexually assaulted her. Uh, and there is to, to kind of proven, I guess, that the that she was indeed attacked and that he is indeed the attacker. There had to be a duel to the death and it was more than just like defending her honor. Like that's how they would decide if she's telling the truth, which we can discuss this whole thing in like a future spoiler review if you want to, but let's go ahead and dive into the film because I really had no idea exactly how they were going to play this. And after sitting through essentially the first act, mm -hmm. if you will, we, we saw what Ridley Scott was doing here and I loved it because he told a story from a uh, multi-perspective view in a sense. There is, a, what is that movie? Rashomon. Yes. It all, it's an old Japanese black and white movie where it is a story that is told through different perspectives and different points of view. So you see s certain truths that is, I love how it actually each, um, arc of this movie kind of kicks off it says Jean's truth yeah. and or the truth or no the the, the truth the, told by or the, as the to. event occurred yeah something like that they like they they used the int very interesting wording until we got to the third act when Marguerite was telling mm -hmm. her point of view of the story which I found interesting I believe um Matt Damon and Ben Affleck along with other writers wrote the first two acts but they actually hired a female writer whose name I'm so sorry I can't remember right now but I'll put it in down here um that um actually hired a female writer to ride the third act because they wanted it to effectively and truthfully tell it from a woman's perspective yeah uh, and i and i like that a lot because that third act is, is heavy it's not easy to watch and as, as we said trigger warning earlier there is, there is acts of um sexual assault uh and you do see it a couple times because there's you know three people telling telling this the 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 events uh, of how how things happen and what happened uh, so the second one in, in the second act from Jack's point of view was already pretty hard to watch. Mm -hmm. The third act telling it from Marguerite's point of view was, was even worse. I, it honestly took every fiber of my being to like not want to get up and like walk out of the theater. Not because I wasn't enjoying the film. Obviously I enjoyed it, but it was just so much, uh, it's traumatizing to watch and just think about, you know, as a woman having to go through that. Um, and knowing that women do go through that. Yeah. Um, and the way, you know, our actors played it and showed it on screen was very effective where the entire, and I talked to a couple of other critics afterwards and they, they all said like, yeah, that third one was difficult to watch. So going back to the Rashomon um, method of like telling the story, I find that very interesting because they really do start the movie in almost like a light way because of the way Matt Damon's character saw himself and told the stories about himself. Well, yeah, not only that, but they really did a good job on ramping it up. Yes. The first one, yeah, was kind of just the outside story because Matt Damon's character is kind of that, you know, it's all, of, the whole story is about him. So it's how he has been wronged, how these things have harmed himself. And then it goes more into what the truth is and then you start getting more down to the nitty-gritty as the movie progresses and I just think that the way that they progressed the intensity and progressed the story was very very well done and Jodie Comer did such an amazing yes. job telling novels within look kind of a thing yeah. and the intensity and the you feel 
the hurt and the pain and the frustration and her trying so hard to be a good wife. But yes. the way women, even back then, I mean, but the way women back then are thought, they're not thought of human. They're thought as property. Mm -hmm. And that's how her husband saw her, the way that all the other men saw her, the way that even women kind of saw themselves. Yeah, it really, it really is um, one heartbreaking to, to see that play out on, on screen and to also recognize that like yeah that's how that's how it was at times it you know even in today 2021 yeah i feel like in some in incidences of here maybe we don't even hear um that is you know some people still think and treat women in such a way for example in the first act when uh jean uh jean de courage carouge told his story of marrying marguerite it was, you know, like he really saw himself to that. I am loving. I am the protector and the provider. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I did marry her out of love. But there is also the property that came with marrying her. Like what is on a part of her dowry. Um, and that was kind of, but it was so lightly touched. It was touched on definitely in his retelling of the story. But it was lightly touched on. And then, you know, in Jack's, Adam Driver's arc of the story, it doesn't really catch that side of it because he wasn't there to tell that side of it he didn't witness it what he did witness is what happened with that piece of property and sort of adam driver's scenes were, were actually he was in a lot more scenes with ben affleck because um even though he was he was not a knight he was a squire but he worked very closely with ben affleck's character and it kind of shapes to be the kind of character he is you know like ladies found him handsome charming but he's like do I say Playboy? You know what that does, in a, in a does way, kind of fit in. He wasn't in like married. He wasn't dating anybody. He was connected to high people. He had that power. He had money. He had influence. So yeah, and he is. They've all the women thought he was very handsome. Mm -hmm. So it really they did kind of play that Playboy aspect yeah. to his character mm -hmm. and the way that it's portrayed back in those days, I think they did a very good job, especially how men, you can tell just how men-centric this world is. Oh yeah, 100%. And how what, only what they think really does matter. And they're, it's just painful <laughs> to watch. I'm sitting there and I'm just like, Ooh, what sucks is that I've heard that in my time. Till yeah, till today we're we actually we a, a bunch of us were, of we're kind of standing years. around like outside of the theater, just chit chatting and just you know kind of giving like quick thoughts about the movie. And we're like, yeah, you know, like people still say it like that till this day. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, they do, and it <laughs> it, it sucks. Uh, so with that, I want to just talk really quickly before we go to, to into Jody's part about Ben Affleck's character who plays, let me just get the name correct. So Ben Affleck played Pierre and he just played this, I felt like he definitely had fun on set because he wasn't, yeah. he was essential to a lot of the scenes and how the story moved. Um, especially we got to, you know, uh, Adam Driver's uh, part and as well as like the third act with Jody. But he's that like just, you know, again, a man in high power, and just the high money, privileged. high privileged, the money and the power and all that kind of got to him. So he, in a way, almost had very little discard for things that like didn't affect him yeah. in his everyday life. Because everyone, because he wasn't living anyone else's life, so it didn't matter how he ruled or collected XYZ or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he just, everything was throw away to him. Throw away, throw away, throw away. And he, in a sense, stole a lot of the scenes that he was in because yeah. of the type of character he is. And it, we can laugh and we can, you know, some of those moments, like, you can laugh it off because it does get pretty heavy, but you, at the same time that you're laughing, you're like, ooh, yeah. 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 It reflects on the a societal. lot of today's society. Even on today's society kind of a thing. Yeah. So we move well forward on to the third scene, which third is act. the third act, sorry. And it is Marguerite's truth. And you guys always know that there's, like, my truth, my side of the story, your side of the story, and the truth. Yeah. Uh, and this is, I like that they called it the truth according to Marguerite because she was the, the victim of the and attack I like and how that happened. How they portrayed it. They had one side of the story, the other side of the story, and then act three is the truth. The truth. So we won't tell you how the duel ends. We want you to see the movie to experience that. But you do, having already seen the first two um 
uh, retelling of the tale play out. And obviously each act comes a little bit further. So like the Matt Damon act comes to an end and then at the Adam Driver one kind of picks up from, you know, essentially where the Matt Damon act picked up, but then goes a little bit further into be him being challenged for for the duel duel and then they Jody's both kind of act. start yeah in the same place mm -hmm. and then Jody's act obviously that comes from once she's been introduced she has met Jean de de Carouge and and then all the way she her scene takes you all the way to the end this is apparently based on a tr uh, true events mm -hmm. uh, which is it, not surprised, honestly. <laughs> um, and you mentioned earlier about Jodie Comer, who has this ability to tell so many emotions and make you feel those emotions with a flick of her eye. Not many actresses working today, I feel like, have that ability. And I'm not saying that if you can't do it, you're a bad actress. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying it's a very rare ability yeah. that people can do it well. Jodie is one of them. I would say Elizabeth Moss is another and she's that I can all, think of. She's also really, I mean, it's not just serious tones as well. In Free Guy and other movies that we've seen, she's done very good at different kinds of, from comedy to to drama. It's a, a, She's really able to portray whatever emotion she wants to get across very well with her look, with her eyes. And so if you have not watched Jodie in Killing Eve, you absolutely should. I started that show because I'm a big fan of Sandra Oh, and I was like, I gotta watch for Sandra. And then and then they introduced Jodie. I was like, who is she? <laughs> oh my gosh. And like you you put these two leading ladies next to each other. I was like, this is a must must watch. I remember binging all of season one on like the plane ride over to New Zealand years ago. Uh, so this is I find the the way that Ripley Scott told the story really interesting. I found it very effective, mm -hmm. uh, and I love that. Not all, and yes, it's because everybody's a hero of their own story. So obviously, Act One and Act Two is going to have different beats and different kind of a vibe to it. Um, but it's it's just really interesting. I think it's very effective, ramping it up all the way to the end to the climax of what is going to happen because the consequences. You're having a duel to the death. She's accusing Jack of this horrible thing and if somehow she's been found you are lying about it um she the consequences is death in, in a lot of these scenarios so we will let you watch the movie and find out what happens at the end there don't spoil it for yourself by uh going to um i don't know search on the internet and find find out the ending like go and ex if you were, if you feel comfortable going to the theaters to um to experience this because uh, i think i think it's a it's a must watch honestly if you enjoy ripley scott you will and these actors you will enjoy this movie so with that said we are going to go ahead and give our review for this and if you our review system's a little bit different it's not like one to five or abc so it's listed in the uh video descriptions so go ahead and just check that out so you have an idea of like where on the scale we land and my rating for this movie is check it out. I really, really enjoyed the story. Now, I'm not going to say it's it's an easy watch. Is it entertaining? Yes. Are you going to leave feeling a little bit heavy? Yes. Yeah. So just be warned. Like, I don't want to be trans. Be like, oh, it's so fun. Like, it's no. <laughs> given given the, there are fun moments. There yes. are light lighthearted moments. But by the time you get to the end, you're going to, you know, as the credits roll, you're going to sit there for a bit and think about, a lot of stuff. Yeah, this is a very heavy movie and it does have a lot of social commentary on the way the world is today and how little we have changed in some regards. But I am definitely giving this a check it out. From the acting to the sets to the fight choreography that we didn't even oh, really yeah, mention. Oh yeah, we didn't even really mention that. The fight that. choreography Let's talk about that real is quick. I thought was amazing in this. It's very dirty, very gruff, very in the broad mud, swords. broadsword, heavy armor <laughs> yes. on just how brutal it is. So I really appreciated the fight choreography that they had in this movie. Same. I was talking actually to um, one of our old sword fighting friends who asked, he was like, hey, you know, good to know that you like the film. How's the sword fighting? Because in the trailer, they, it's, I mean, it's called The Last Duel. So like these guys, these are men are fighting for their lives. And I said, one of the things that I really like about it, having studied fight choreography, is that, you know, when they, the, the actual weapons and actual broadsword and the gear that they wear is heavy AF. So you wouldn't like, 
dance around on a battlefield like you were Superman. Like, yeah. you are tired. When you swing that sword, you have to put all of your power into that swing. And then, you you know, the center of the, the force of the blade, like, you have to react to that. You can't just be like, bing, 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 like you're holding a lightsaber. It doesn't... It's not realistic when you're holding a steel blade like a broadsword. So I do like that they showed that it was not easy to move in those armors in a dire like situation where if you're pinned into a corner, how do you get out of it while wearing all these armor? How much can the armor actually protect you? Um, and it does get pretty gets pretty brutal at the end there oh, so uh yeah. enjoy that final uh duel scene if you're like you know like you're into the you know sword and shield bra sword fighting uh it's really really fantastic so that is it that is the end of our review thank you so much for hanging out with us as we talk about this movie let us know your thoughts on the film without spoilers if you've seen it already in, in uh theaters thank you so much for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one